this is the second video on chemical bonding. And in this video, we're going to be dealing with how you come up with representative element ions. And we're going to start by reviewing bonding basics and that chemistry occurs at the electron level, that we're concerned about the valence electrons, the electrons in the highest energy level, because those are the ones that are used in bonding. Don't forget the octet rule, which is really that when bonding, atoms will achieve a noble gas configuration. Ions, when you gain or lose electrons, so the protons do not equal the electrons. And in ionic bonding, you transfer electrons, you make ions, opposite charges attract. In covalent bonding, you share electrons, and there is no formation of ions. And the periodic table for the representative elements can help you figure out how many valence electrons you have. So you look at the representative elements, which are highlighted in either red or blue, and everything in the first representative column has one valence electron. Everything in the second has two. The third column has three. The fourth has four. Fifth column has five valence electrons. The sixth column has six valence electrons. The seventh has seven valence electrons. All of the elements in the eighth column have noble gas configuration, which means they all have eight valence electrons except for helium, which has two. Now remember, ions form when you gain or lose electrons. Well, how do you know whether you gain or lose the electrons? What you will do is compare the number of valence electrons you have to the number 8. You'll either have to gain X electrons to get to 8, or you will have to lose Y electrons to get to 8. Whichever value is smaller is what you're going to do. And this only works with the representative elements. And remember, the representative elements are the ones highlighted in red and blue. Because we are gaining or losing electrons, the number of protons no longer equals the number of electrons. This is why I was insistent that elements are defined by the number of protons. Those will not change within an element, but electrons can. This means the charge on the atom is no longer zero. Or in other words, you no longer have a neutral charge, which means you now have an ion, and an ion has an ionic charge. The ionic charge is defined as the number of protons minus the number of electrons that the ion has. This ionic charge can be either positive or negative, and if you have a positively charged ion, you say you have a cation. If you have a negatively charged ion, you say you have an anion. And so here is an example to show you what we're talking about. And we'll start with calcium. When you take a look at the periodic table, you find calcium here. And you see that it has an atomic number of 20, so it has 20 protons. It's in the second representative column, so it has two valence electrons. And you can see that over here. Now, if you lose those two outer electrons, you now have the noble gas configuration. If you start with the neutral atom here, and then you gain six electrons, you'll also have a noble gas configuration. Two is less than six, so calcium will lose the two electrons. You started with 20 electrons, you ended with 18, but you kept the number of protons the same. So the ionic charge, which is protons minus electrons, becomes 20 protons, minus 18 electrons is plus 2, and basically you go from this to this. And this gets written symbolically as calcium 2 plus, or calcium plus 2, or calcium plus plus, and you say you have the calcium ion or the calcium cation. As you'll discover next year when you take AP chemistry, I write my ions this way, the symbol followed by the number followed by the plus or minus sign, and then just for simplicity, I always call it just basically the ion. Example two, phosphorus. Well, as we'll see in a second, phosphorus has 15 protons, so the neutral atom has 15 electrons. It's here in the fifth representative column. Notice the atomic number is 15. So as I said, it's in the fifth representative column, which means it has five valence electrons. Gain three or lose five to change the noble gas configuration. Three is less than five, so it's easier to gain three. Fifteen electrons plus three electrons is 18 electrons. So to calculate the ionic charge, we go 15 minus 18. You get minus three. So you say you have P3 minus or P minus three or P negative, negative, negative. 
and you call it the phosphide ion. And here, to name a monoatomic anion, you change the suffix of the element to IDE, and then you add the word ion. And I would write it as P3 minus. Example three, and this is the last one that I'll do, and then I'll have a couple for you to do. Carbon is here, which is in the fourth representative column, has four valence electrons, gain four or lose four, and obviously four equals four. So what are we going to do? And this is a trick example. Carbon usually bonds covalently. It rarely ionizes. So we'll come back to that in a later lecture. So example four is the first one for you to do. What is the barium ion? Go. And the correct answer is Ba2 plus or the barium ion. How did we get that? First, we identified barium on the periodic table, and we see that it's here with an atomic number of 56. It's in the second representative column, which means it has two valence electrons. Lose two or gain six. Obviously, two is less than six, so we're going to lose two. So now we have 54 electrons. We're going to calculate the ionic charge. We get 56 minus 54 is plus two. So we have the barium two plus or the barium ion. The fifth example, once again, for you to do. Fluorine, go. The correct answer here is F1 minus or the fluoride ion because it's a cation. How do we get this? Fluorine is here and notice it has an atomic number of nine. So it's in the seventh representative group. It has seven valence electrons. Gain one or lose seven. Obviously, you want to gain one, so you've gone from 9 to 10 electrons, but you stayed with 9 protons. 9 minus 10 is minus 1, and so what you end up with is this for the correct answer. So to review how you form ions for representative elements, the number of valence electrons can be determined from the periodic table. You look at which column it is, and that's how many valence electrons it has. Now you compare the number of electrons to be lost or gained. The lower number is what is going to occur. Ions do have unequal number of protons and electrons. If you have more protons than electrons, the ion is positively charged, and these are called cations. If the protons are fewer than the number of electrons, then you're negatively charged, and you have an anion. The ionic charge is, by definition, the number of protons minus the number of electrons, and that is specific, protons minus electrons. You write the symbol as the element X raised to the ionic charge. If it's a cation, it's the name of the metal, followed by the word ion. Oh, by the way, metals will always be cations. If it's an anion, and anions are nonmetals, you change the suffix to IDE and add the word ion. So that is how you form ions for the representative elements. But obviously, we've left out a chunk of the elements, which are the transition metals. And in the next lecture, I will explain how we know what the ionic charge is on the transition metals.